It's your boy Lagin24 coming at you with some COD World War II. What's up, every everybody? What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. And I just got home from E3 out in Los Angeles, California. Had a great time, an amazing time. I want to thank Activision for flying me out, putting me up in a hotel room, and allowing me to play and capture World War II early for you guys. So today, we're going to be going over the divisions while some gameplay is in the background. We've got Team Deathmatch, Domination, and a little bit of that war game mode as well. But I kind of want to dive into Divisions a little bit, talk about it, and hopefully we can get a better understanding of exactly what Divisions are, how they work, and what role they're going to play in the new Call of Duty. Okay, let's try to break down these Divisions best way that I can. And guys, I'm not allowed to show any menu, or this would be a whole lot easier. So just bear with me as we go through these explanations. So. You have 10 total divisions, and uh, one of the first options is Infantry 1. So within Infantry 1, you load out with the M1 Garand and the M1911. Okay, so those are your guns. Now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to swap out these guns for other guns, or if each division has a set gun, and that's it. If you choose Infantry 1, you will be using the M1 Garand in the M1911. At least that's the way it was at the event. Now, this is still an early build of the game, and I don't know what it's going to look like when it's fully completed, if we will be able to uh, have a couple of options for our guns within each division. But as it stands right now, Infantry 1, M1 Garand, M1911. So each division has its own division skill. And in Infantry 1, the division skill is the bayonet charge. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to unlock other skills for each division or Infantry 1 and Infantry 2 are just going to be the bayonet charge. But the bayonet charge is pretty self-explanatory. You have a bayonet on the end of your rifle. You go around stabbing people with it using the R3. Also within the divisions, um, there is division training. Now, as it stood at this capture event for Infantry 1, the division training was Infantry Man 3. So you looks like you'll be able to rank up your division training from one to at least three, probably higher. But Infantryman 3 uh, had two extra attachments for your primary weapon and one attachment on the secondary weapon. Okay, so here's the deal. We weren't allowed to put attachments on our weapons. They were already programmed um, with the attachments on them. It does look like these are going to be interchangeable though. So... In this capture event, the M1 Garand with the Infantryman 3, keeping in mind that allowed us to have two extra attachments on our gun, it went out like this. The M1 Garand with high caliber, weapon grip, advanced rifling, and quick draw. So you get a look right there. You get to listen at what some of the attachments that are going to be available in Call of Duty World War II are. And all over on the M1 11, M1911, we had extended mag on it. Also in each division, there is something called basic training. So we just did division training, and now we're talking about basic training. And again, not 100% on if we can rank up the basic training or swap out the basic training ability. But the basic training that was in Infantry 1 was known as Steady. And Steady was immune to shell shock and tactical equipment. So your tack mask. It also allowed you to sprint for longer distances. So we're talking about marathon there. So as you can see, perks are back. They're just under basic training and attachments are there. They're just under division training. And I believe that you're going to have to rank up both division and basic training to unlock more perks and more attachments. And again, the division skill, I believe, is the one thing that is set in stone for whatever division you choose. So again, Infantry 1, Bayonet Charge. Infantry 2, also Bayonet Charge. So I was telling you there are 10 divisions total. There are two for Infantry, there are two for Airborne, there are two for Armored, there are two for Mountain, and there are two for Expeditionary. So we can talk about Infantry 2 a little bit, and again, your division skill is the Bayonet Charge. And Infantry 2 was programmed for us to load out with the BAR, the BAR, right? And it also had the Luger Pistol. Um, now, the division training was also Infantryman 3, so you know that one had the two extra attachments and one, ta uh, one, extra, one attachment on the secondary weapon. So our Luger loaded out with advanced rifling 
And the BAR, the bar, had a sight on it. It had a wooden grip on it. It had advanced rifling and quick draw. And the sight reminded me of like an aperture sight that you would see in COD uh, World at War. Now the basic training was different from Infantry 1 on this one. So we get, we get a look at another perk. So remember basic training, just remember perk, all right? It's just fancy for perk. Basic training was known as Hunker and Hunker reveals the enemy equipment and you take less explosive damage. So it's a flak jacket and you can see the equipment, I guess. Yes, it glows red through walls um, so you can see you know bouncing beddies and things like that and it also loaded out with a smoke grenade and i forgot to mention infantry one had a frag grenade so the next division is known as airborne and there is again airborne one and airborne two and the division skill this is the one that i think is set to the division you choose is known as suppressor and obviously you put a suppressor on your gun you can toggle it during the match to have it on and have it off. So it's actually a very tactical piece of equipment the way they've implemented it in COD World War II. Um, and then if we go down to the division training, it's called Pathfinder 3. So this one allows you to sprint for longer distances, increased sprint speed, and climb over obstacles faster. So this is certainly, if you like to rush, Airborne class is probably the, gonna be the one you wanna play with because you can move really fast in smoke grenade as a tactical piece of equipment. The guns that you'll find in Airborne 1, at least at this capture event, again, I'm not sure if the guns are gonna be interchangeable or what, but in this capture event, it was the M1928 with extended mag and quick draw on it. And we also had the M1911 pistol with no attachments on it. All right, moving over to Airborne 2. Again, your division skill is the suppressor and Pathfinder 3 was set to this one as well. I, I'm pretty sure your division training, the Pathfinder 3 can be, like I said, Pathfinder 2, Pathfinder 1. It's basically like having the perk and then maybe the, the pro version of it, you know, kind of upgrading it that way. I'm not 100% on that. And then down in basic training though, this one's different from Airborne 1. Airborne 2 has something known as Phantom. And Phantom is quieter movement, take no fall damage, and invisible to enemy recon aircraft while moving. So if a spy plane is up, a UAV, whatever you wanna call it, uh, so long as you're moving, you're not gonna be on the radar. Now Airborne 2, you load out with an MP40 with quick draw and advanced rifling, and your secondary, instead of a gun, it's actually a shovel. And you can go around melee people with a shovel. So I'm definitely pretty, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to switch at least the secondaries out within these divisions. But again, it wasn't set up for us to do that. And your equipment piece is the N74ST. It's a sticky bomb. It looks like a stick when you throw it with a ball of clay on the end that sticks to stuff. So basically it's a Simtech. Now for those of you who like a little more firepower, we're moving over to the Armored Division. So Armored Division 1, the division skill is a bipod. Now this is why I think that these division skills certainly will not be interchangeable because the bipod would only fit like on an LMG. It wouldn't really make sense to have a bipod on an AR, would it? I'm not sure. But anyways, the bipod, um, you can toggle it on and off by hitting left on your D-pad. So if you're like at a windowsill or you wanna go prone and lay on the ground and deploy your bipod, you're gonna have like no recoil on your LMG and just shoot laser beams at the enemy. So you could set up in a good spot with this and just kinda mow down people as they're coming around a corner or something with little to no recoil. In the division training section, it's called Tanker 3. And this is a rocket launcher as a secondary weapon, extra piece of equipment, and throw equipment faster, farther, and while sprinting. So I was playing this and I was throwing my grenades under the uh, airborne, divi uh, airborne division and they weren't going very far. I mean, I was trying my best to just launch those things. So it looks like you're gonna have better luck with that with the Tanker 3 division training. Okay, so for the basic training, it's called Loaded, and that is extra magazines and reload weapons faster, so that's good for an LMG, absolutely. Uh, so like I said, this one came with the Lewis LMG, and it had weapon grip and full metal jacket, so I'll look at full metal jacket now, and it had the M1 bazooka as your rocket launcher, and it also had two of those sticky bomb nades. And if we move over to Armored 2, same thing, the bipod, Tanker 3, same thing for division training, except now we go to basic training, it's called scoped. Move faster while aiming down sights, and extra attachment on the primary weapon. 
So in this one, Armored 2, we got the MG15 with quick draw, weapon grip, and extended mag on it. Again, loaded out with a grenade launcher, a rocket launcher, but this one's called the Panzer Shrek. So a different launcher there. And then we had a couple of gas grenades, poisonous smoke grenades actually is what they were. Okay, so for all of my sniper friends out there, I actually did some sniping at this event. It was very fun. Uh, we've got the mountain division. So mountain one, um, your division skill is sharpshooter. This is interesting, so listen up. If you hold down the L3 button, that's normally how you hold your breath when you're um, trying to steady your scope. So you hold down, you hold your breath with L3, and this is going to block out the surroundings. And in return, you're going to acquire aim assist and enemy names, so you can see them if they're really far off in the distance. If you're using this L3 hold breath, plus it blacks out around the scope, and that's going to give you automatic aim assist. Um, so that's definitely going to help you snipers out. That is a very strong division skill. Um, this one came with a Division Training Scout 3. You can acquire enemy names from further away, so that will probably work really well with the uh, Division skill. Increased minimap coverage, and that is one thing that I noticed when playing. The minimap is circular instead of square, and it's kind of small, so you don't get a whole bunch of coverage. So Mountain 1 is going to give you more of that minimap. Um, and then also, hidden to player controlled streaks. So yeah, that's good stuff right there. Player controlled, controlled streaks will not see you. Um, the basic training was called Undercover, and you can kill without revealing enemy death locations. Uh, no name or reticle color change when targeted as well. So within Mountain 1, you load out with the M1903 um, sniper rifle, and this has a ballistic calibration attachment added to it. And the secondary was the M1911. And also for your equipment, it was a bouncing Betty. Okay, Mountain 2, again with the sharpshooter. That's to hold the breath thing. And then Scout 3, again, same as Mountain 1. And then we go to basic training, and it's called Forage. You can swap your weapons faster. You can throw enemy equipment faster. And you can resupply ammo and equipment from dead enemies. This class came with the Car 98K with the iron sights and extended map, uh, mag. I didn't have any luck with the iron sights on this gun. I was doing horrible with it, doing horrible with it. And the pistol, and this is something you haven't heard yet so far in this video, the M712, the M712. If I am mispronouncing anything, feel free to correct me, please. And this one also had the sticky bomb as your equipment. Okay, so we're gonna go over the last division now. It's called Expeditionary, and this division, skill is known as incendiary shells so this one is really cool shotgun rounds which spark flames that burns enemies to death you can activate this by hitting left on your d-pad and it'll change out the shells from the regular shells to the normal shell so we're talking about shells obviously you know this is a shotgun class we'll get to that in a second now the division training is known as sapper 3 this gives you extra magazines you're immune to shell shock and tactical equipment. So you're running around with a flak jacket and a tactical mask on and extended mags. This is a really good class if you like shotguns. Your basic training in Expeditionary 1 is known as Ordnance and score streaks cost less and you can reroll care package. This class comes with uh, the Winchester 1897 with advanced rifling and ex extended mag on it. And the secondary was a melee. Again, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to change out our secondaries and change out our attachments. I want to say the primaries are probably going to be locked in, though. I'm, I'm kind of getting that vibe, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And the equipment was a smoke grenade. Expeditionary 2, you've got the uh, incendiary shells as your division uh, skill again. You got Sapper 3, of course, that was the flak jacket, tack mask, all that stuff. And then this time, basic training is called Duelist. Two attachments on a secondary weapon. So that's kind of cool, I guess, if you're a secondary weapon kind of a player. But this class loaded out with a shotgun with no name. It literally said shotgun. What shotgun is this? It doesn't say. I'm looking at the menu right now, but you can't see it. Okay, well, look. All right, it's got a shotgun. Congratulations. It had quick draw and extended mags on it. And the secondary had an M712 pistol with high caliber and advanced rifling. So there's your two attachments. And this one had a concussion grenade as the secondary. And that's kind of the explanation of division the divisions. Again, I couldn't show you the, the actual menu screen we were told not to, nor the firing range. I can say that the firing range is super awesome. Very cool looking. Um, very easily accessible while you're waiting 
for the next match to start up with. And as far as divisions go, that is it. That's my explanation. Hopefully you understand a little bit more than you did before. And I know it's probably a bit confusing without a visual aid in front of you. But just remember, in time, you're going to see everything that I saw. And don't forget, there is a beta for everybody to play if you pre-order. So don't forget to pre-order the game. And you can hop in the beta and check it out yourself now don't forget this was also an early build of the game nothing's probably set in stone they're gonna have some stuff added some stuff taken away i do want to say the game felt really really good to play i very very much enjoyed myself i was playing against guys who play multiplayer for a living so i'm really sorry the gameplay wasn't great but at least i got a few uh kill streaks in there score streaks and if you guys want me to do a video breakdown of all the score streaks, just let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, what division suits your style of play? Let me know down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Once again, thank you to Activision and thank you to you guys for making it possible for me to get invited to these kind of events. Love you and I mean it. And as always, it's been your boy Lagging24 and I will see you uh, next time.